In the previous videos, we have mentioned about the short-term losses and the long-term losses. We know that short-term losses happen at the transfer of the pre-stressed concrete member and the long-term losses appears due to the long period of time during the service life of the structure. There are three types of short-term losses which are the elastic losses, frictions and wobble and draw-in of wages. There are also three types of long-term losses which are the shrinkage, steel relaxations and also elastic and creep of concrete. In this video, we're going to discuss about different types of the losses that appears in different types of pre-stressing methods. You know that due to different pre-stressing methods, the combinations of losses will be different. And you know that there are two main types of pre-stressing methods which is pre-tensioning and post-tensioning. Pre-tensioning involves stressing the tendon before the casting of concrete. As for post-tensioning, the tendon is being stressed after casting of the concrete. And under the category of post-tensioning, all the tendons may be stressed simultaneously, which is at the same time, or the tendon may be stressed successively, which is one by one. The stressing due to the successive tendon is by definition is after transfer of the tendon, there will be stressing of the following tendon. Now let us look into the combinations of the losses due to different methods of pre-stressing. First, you know that all the pre-stressed members endure long-term losses. That means the losses due to the shrinkage, steel relaxations, and elastic and creep always appear regardless different methods of pre-stressing. Their calculations will be totally same using the same set of equation. The main difference will be the short-term losses. As the pre-tensioning method stress the tendon after casting of the concrete. The tendon is directly in contact with the concrete. No that is required to provide pathway for the tendon. And you do not require any anchors for the stress to be transferred into the concrete. Because of that, the pre-tension method do not have the frictions and wobble and also the drawing of the wedges. If you are designing a member with pre-tensioning method, the short-term losses will be elastic losses and all the long-term losses. Because of this, you will expect a significant less short-term losses appear in the pre-tensioned member. If you are very concerned with the losses, and you would like to fully utilize the capacity of the tendon, it is always more economical for you to use the pre-tension method. Of course, for the pre-tension methods, there are limitations in terms of the size of the member, which is mainly governed by the requirement for the transportation purpose. Next, we look into the post-tension method. There are two ways of stressing the tendon, which you have all the tendons being stressed simultaneously. In this case, you will not have elastic losses, because the elastic losses has already been compensated by the hydraulic jack during stressing. The member undergo elastic shortening during the jacking operations. And the elastic shortening process has already been completed before the pre-stressing force is effectively transferred into the member. Therefore, there will be no elastic losses. However, for the post-tensioning member, nothing will be provided so that the steel tendon can be inserted through and jacking force can be done. There will be direct contact between the tatting and also the steel tendon. 
This will give you the frictional and wobble losses. And for the post tension member, anchorage is required at both ends of the member. There will be one live end and another with the dead end. The drawing of the wages, which is the anchorage, at the dead end has already consolidated before the transfer of the pre-stressing force. However, the live end will undergo the drawing. This is due to the mechanical interlocking mechanism of the anchor. This drawing of the anchor when the hydraulic jet is released will lead to the immediate shortenings of the steel tendon which result in losses of pre-stressing force. Therefore, the losses due to the drawing and the wages appear. As for the long-term losses, the post-tensioning method with all the tendons being stressed simultaneously will have all the long-term losses including the shrinkage, relaxations, elastic and creep. Now let us look at the last column here. It is the post-tensioning method where the tendons is stressed one by one. That means after you done stressing the first tendon, you will proceed with the stressing of the second tendon. As the tendons is stressed one by one, there will not be any elastic losses for the first tendons being stressed as the elastic shortening has already settled before the transfer of the first tendon. However, starting from the second tendon, there will be further elastic shortening due to the additions of the pre-stressing force by the second tendon and such an elastic shortening will lead to the losses of the previous tendon. Same goes to the third tendon. The elastic shortening caused by the third tendon will lead to the elastic losses for the first two tendons. This effect will proceed with the following tendon where the shortening caused by the following tendon will lead to the losses of the previous tendon. Therefore, there will be elastic shortening losses when the tendon is being stressed successively. Because of this, this is by far that having the highest degree of the losses. As all the losses will apply to the conditions of the post tensions where the tendons are stressed one by one. It is to be emphasized that you will need to know the mechanisms of different pre-stressing methods for you to determine different types of losses. And you will have to adequately define the existence of different types of losses for you to accurately calculate the total losses acting on the member. One more thing needs to be highlighted. The equations for the elastic losses for the pre-tension member and the elastic losses for the post-tension member are different. This is because the mechanism of elastic losses is different. This will be discussed in detail when we introduce about the equations for different types of losses.